Hey everyone, today we're going to look at backing up your Synology NAS to Backblaze B2 using Hyper Backup. Now in our last video we looked at how to use a Raspberry Pi and an external hard drive to back up your Synology NAS using Hyper Backup. Now that process was a little different than this one, but it was nice in the sense that we were able to back up large quantities of data at a relatively low cost. Now Backblaze B2 isn't particularly expensive, but it's not necessarily cheap either, and with most cloud storages you're pretty much paying uh, to download your data, to upload your data, and to store your data. So I use Backblaze really just for the most important data that I have that I want to ensure I never ever lose. So to give you a little overview of what we're looking to do today, we're going to use Hyper Backup to back up our Synology NAS to Backblaze. Now this is something that's new because Backblaze recently announced uh, that they have S3 compatible APIs, which is something they, they never offered before. So prior to this, you had to use Synology's CloudSync if you wanted to use Backblaze as a um, backup destination. And CloudSync is slightly different because it's just syncing your files. So if you think of that process, if you sync your files every time they're updated, you're not necessarily backing them up. You're really just syncing them. So you really relied on Backblaze's uh, version history to be able to actually look at it as having a true backup. So it was more of a sync tool that in a catastrophic situation you would have had to go back and either try and restore a snapshot or try and restore a previous version of a file. So fast forward to today, after Backblaze announced these S3 compatible APIs, we can use Hyper Backup to back up uh, our data from our NAS. And that really puts the power in our hands because at this point we will have a true backup, which is something we didn't necessarily have prior to this. So before we get started, as always, I have full written instructions in the description. If you're a Backblaze customer, you kind of understand how they've laid out their site. Uh, and everything pretty much fits into its own bucket. So you have a bucket, and you can store data in that bucket, and you can assign application keys to that bucket uh, to actually authenticate in. So this is important to note because legacy buckets will not be compatible with their new API, their new S3 API. So you have to take a look at your existing buckets and see if they have an endpoint next to it. If it's blank, you know you need to create a new bucket. So if necessary, create a new bucket and create a new application key as well if your current application key is not S3 compatible. And you'll be able to see that at the bottom when you create one. If you do have to create an application key, make sure that you check off the box that says allow listing all bucket names including bucket creation dates. If you don't have this selected, you won't be able to see this bucket from Hyper Backup in later steps. After the bucket is created and the application key is created, you can navigate over to DSM and you can launch Hyper Backup and create a new backup task. Now the backup destination will be S3 storage and when you proceed to the next step, you're going to have to select custom server URL as your S3 server. At this point, your access key will be your key ID and your secret key will be your application key. When you select the bucket name, you'll be able to select the newly created bucket that you had just created in a prior step, uh, and the directory will be the actual file name that Hyper Backup will use when it's backing up to this destination. So before we proceed, one important thing I wanna mention is that provisioning is not always immediate since it's a cloud service. So you might have to wait upwards of 10 to 15 minutes for your bucket to actually sync for you to be able to access it from Hyper Backup. If you do everything up to this step and it's not working, give it a few minutes and try again and it should work. Uh, in my experience, it's been anywhere from five to 10 minutes, but it'll work uh, after giving a little bit of time. After that, select your folders that you'd like to back up and any of the applications you'd like to back up as well. And then you'll get to the final step, which is the backup settings. Now in the backup settings, since you're backing up to a cloud server, you should definitely have a schedule enabled and you know if you want to do it daily or, or weekly it's really up to you and you should also have an integrity check in, uh, scheduled as well and this will just ensure that you're able to restore this backup if necessary you should do this at least once a week the last thing I want to touch on is client-side encryption so since this is a cloud server you want your data to be protected and client-side encryption would allow that uh, so client-side encryption sets up that backup file that it cannot be accessed or opened without the password or the encryption key. So going into this, you know that only people that have that password will actually be able to access this backup file if it gets into the wrong hands. Uh, so that's the first thing. The other thing that I wanna note is that for whatever reason, if you lose that password or you lose that encryption key, you will not be able to get this data back. 
So you have to really protect that data. You have to make sure you have it in a password manager somewhere um, so that you can actually access it if necessary. If you lose it, it's gone. After you configure these settings and the rotation settings, you can then back up your NAS. So depending on the size of the data that you're backing up, it could go as quick as a few minutes to a few hours to a few days. Uh, but when it's done, there's, there's one important thing that I want to note. You always want to test to make sure that you can restore your data. So a true backup is great to have, but if you don't know that you can restore it, how good is it? So I'm quickly going to show the process where I just go in and I created a test folder with a few test files. And I just delete those files from the from the uh, the shared folder that I have, and then I go into Hyper Backup and I actually restore that data. And I have to use the password because I encrypted uh, I encrypted that that backup, but I have to use that encryption password. And when I do, you'll see that I can restore the files. And when I go into DSM into my File Explorer, I can then view those files. So this is kind of a full end-to-end -end test where you're ensuring that you're able to back up the data and then you're ensuring that you're able to restore the data. And at that point, you know that this process is working properly. So once again, due to costs, this is something that you might want to keep to only your most important data. That's not to say that you can't back up all of your data. If you want to back up your entire NAS, you can. It's just that the costs will increase and generally it's not always worth it from a dollar perspective for everybody. But the process works, it works well. I've been running it probably for about a month now, uh, and I've had absolutely no problems with it, no, no issues whatsoever. So it's, it's definitely something that I recommend and I think that you guys should look into. So once again, I have written instructions for this in the description if you want to check those out. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching.